Joining me now is former director of National Intel, John Ratcliffe. John, now you say that former Intel counterparts have told you some disturbing things about what Biden's kind of ceding this role to the Europeans, maybe to China, on the world stage actually does for this current situation. Explain your concerns. Well, Laura, I think to your, to your point about, you know, why the U.S. isn't more involved as the world's superpower is because the world's expectations, certainly our allies' expectations for Joe Biden and his administration um, have been lowered as a result of what they've seen for the past years. I, I've talked to my former counterparts, um, uh, intelligence counterparts and some of our strongest allies, and, and what they relate is the problem is it's no longer a perception that Joe Biden be seen as weak. It's the fact that Joe Biden... Um, has proven that he is weak through his decisions, as people have seen in Afghanistan and now in the lead up to, you know, this crisis that became an invasion uh, in the Ukraine. So, you know, our allies have seen what the American people have seen, that Joe Biden makes promises that he doesn't keep, that he makes promises that he doesn't remember. He makes promises that he, he walks back. And, and as a result, that's why you're seeing things like um, you know, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky tomorrow, you know, bypassing Biden and going directly to Congress. It's why leaders of foreign countries like the like the Saudi prince and the sheik of the UAE uh, last week not taking Biden's phone calls even uh, to talk about the oil, uh, oil crisis worldwide. So, you know, the rest of the world is rising to the to meet the challenge of Vladimir Putin, but unfortunately, they don't see. Uh, Joe Biden as particularly relevant uh, to coming to uh, meet that challenge. Well, John, Jen Psaki tried to explain what Biden's goals are going to be when he heads to Brussels. He's actually physically going to fly to Brussels. Watch. His goal is to meet in person, face to face with his European counterparts and talk about and assess where we are at this point in the conflict, uh, in uh, the invasion of, of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, we've been incredibly aligned uh, to date. That doesn't happen by accident. The president's a big believer in face to face diplomacy. So it's an opportunity to do exactly that. OK, John. You've heard of shutter, uh, you know, shuttle diplomacy. This is shutter diplomacy. The, f the face of diplomacy. What does that mean, especially on the heels of uh, Kamala Harris not knowing that Ukraine was not a member of NATO in her remarks? <laughs> this is yeah, embarrassing. So yeah, that, that is the problem is, you know, even before Joe Biden goes there, the problem is, you know, his words are viewed as empty and uh, his actions are uh, have proven to be uh, timid and uh, reluctant and and late to the game. And you know, as you talked about, you know, as Joe Biden sends Kamala Harris to a, to a meaningless to stutter through a meaningless press conference in in Romania, you know, the prime minister, the Polish, Czech, and Slovenian prime ministers literally went into Kiev to meet with Zelensky in the middle of a war zone. I mean, the rest of the world, you know, even the Swedes and the Swiss who are usually on the sidelines are all rising to meet the challenge. And and Joe Biden is all about words. But when it comes to his actions, he's doing things like impeding the delivery of Polish MiGs uh, to the Ukrainians. The things that, that uh, President Zelensky is going to beg Congress for tomorrow are the things that Joe Biden should have been giving him months ago when the intelligence was clear that Russia was going to invade. But Joe Biden's strategy, remember, Laura, was if Russia invades, mm -hmm. then we'll get involved and help Ukraine. If Russia invades, then we'll impose sanctions, even though the intelligence was clear that this is exactly what was going to happen. So, you know, it's, it's little wonder that the, that the, that the world has, has moved on and that this crisis yeah, well, hopefully will be solved, but it won't be solved by, by the Biden administration. Now, there is a moment um, from an interview that Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, gave today that you have to see, John, watch. How real is the risk of this spiraling into nuclear war? I have to tell you, we have real concerns that uh, uh, Russia could use uh, a chemical uh, a weapon, another we weapon of mass destruction. If they do use chemical weapons, uh, what will the U.S. and the NATO allies do? We've been very clear, uh, including uh, with, uh, with Russia, uh, with others, uh, that there would be a very serious response. I'm not going to spell it out here, but the consequences would be severe. John, your reaction to that? Uh, you know, my reaction is it's more of the same from the Biden administration. It, it underscores the fact that Vladimir Putin's deterrence is working. All he has to do 
is uh, rattle the saber and talk about nuclear weapons or chemical weapons and the Biden administration backs down and says, well, we, we can't do something because it might be escalatory, where the rest of the countries uh, involved in this are all stepping up. They're hearing the exact same threats. And yet, you know, again, prime ministers are going into war zones to meet with Zelensky to solve this problem. And, and, and the Biden administration is looking for ways um, to, to not lead, but to, you know, stay at the back of the room. And it's, it's, uh, it, John, it, it's unfortunate. A, it does a, not portend well for the next three yeah. years. Well, just a simple question. Would any of this be happening, do you think, if Donald Trump were president? Well, it didn't happen when Donald Trump was president. So, you know, that's the answer to the question. It, it didn't happen because Vladimir Putin wouldn't have done those things, just as President Xi wouldn't be doing the things that he's doing now over Taiwan and Iran wouldn't be doing the things that they're doing. You know, it's about deterrence and, and we don't have that. We're not, no. uh, well, we're not imposing that on our adversaries. No, well, the answer is no. They wouldn't have been doing this. Uh, John, it's great to see you as always.